Well, we have the privilege once again today of celebrating both sacraments, just as we did last Lord's Day. So let me ask the elders to come up front and then also invite Wes and Sandy and Chandler, Tom Knight, as well as all of the Gaudette family. Tom, April, Olivia, Gabriella, Maria, Tommy, Gloria, Victoria, everybody up front. And Dan will also be received on another Lord's Day. He was not able to make it, was not feeling well this morning. Y'all come on up, we'll put... Y'all on the hot seat. Uh, these dear saints are uh, well known, I think, to everyone. Uh, Wes, and and uh, Wes and Sandy and Chandler obviously have been members of this congregation a couple of times and uh, were here before I got here 10 years ago. And uh, so they are, they are precious and beloved to us uh, away in Michigan for a while uh, to help and take care of family and now back in the area and we're thankful for them. Tom has come uh, recently for several months. Uh, he's been so diligent morning, evening, Wednesday nights. Many of you have gotten to know him and he's been a, a joy and a blessing. And then the Gaudette family who have been coming now for some months as well. Uh, they may be getting the prize right now for the longest drive. I'm not sure. It might be a toss-up with a couple of you, but, uh, but they're definitely in the running. And uh, it's just been a delight to get to know them and to hear their stories of grace, the ways that God has been working in their lives and then leading them here to this congregation. And we'll be baptizing uh, the four of the younger children uh, this morning. But first, to all of you, beloved in Christ Jesus, we thank our God for the grace that was given you in that you have accepted God's promise of salvation and publicly confessed your faith in the Savior, Jesus Christ. We do rejoice that God in His gracious providence has brought you to this congregation and that given you the desire to unite with us as members. And so we ask this morning that you would testify before us to the faith that you profess by giving assent to the following questions. Do you believe the Bible consisting of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and its doctrine of salvation to be the perfect and only true doctrine of salvation? Praise God. Do you believe in one living and true God, in whom eternally there are three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who are the same in being and equal in power and glory, and that Jesus Christ is God the Son, come in the flesh? Praise God. Do you confess that because of your sinfulness you abhor and humble yourself before God, that you repent of your sin, and that you trust for salvation not in yourself, but in Jesus Christ alone? Praise God. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your sovereign Lord? And do you promise that in reliance on the grace of God, you will serve Him with all that is in you, forsake the world, resist the devil, put to death your sinful deeds and desires, and lead a godly life? Praise God. And finally, do you promise to participate faithfully in this church's worship and service, to submit in the Lord to its government, and to heed its discipline, even in case you should be found delinquent in doctrine or life? Praise God. Uh, I'm going to ask the Gaudettes to come up to the front, and uh, everybody else, don't go too far. But just The Word of God says in Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27, that you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. It's a beautiful thought to say that the righteousness of Christ that has been imputed to us is visibly signified and sealed to us in our baptism. It's a very powerful sign of the covenant. The Apostle Peter proclaimed on the day of Pentecost, the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And therefore, when converts in the New Testament, such as Lydia and the Philippian jailer, were baptized on profession of faith in Christ, their whole households were also baptized and added to Christ's church. In fact, ever since the days of the apostles, Christ has been pleased to add to His church both individuals and families. Baptism teaches that we and our children are conceived and born in sin. In it, we are admonished to detest ourselves, to humble ourselves before God, and to turn to Him for our cleansing and salvation. Baptism signifies and seals to us the washing away of our sins through Jesus Christ. And for this reason, we're baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is through baptism that God calls us and places us under obligation to live in new obedience to Him, even as we heard this morning. We trust in Him and are to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are to renounce the sinful ways of life. We are to put to death our old nature and show by our lives that we belong to God. 
Baptism is a seal and totally reliable witness that we have an eternal covenant with God. And it is these things that baptism teaches us and that we then are to teach to our children. Our children should not be excluded from baptism because of their inability to understand its meaning. Just as without their knowledge they share in Adam's condemnation, so are they without their knowledge received to grace in Christ. God established His covenant with Abraham and his children, and He refers to the children of even one believer as holy. And just as children of the covenant were circumcised in the Old Testament, so the children of the New Testament church are to be baptized today. So to the congregation, as you've heard many times, even last week, and so I remind you again now, as vows are made before you and baptism is administered, you who are baptized should take this opportunity to reflect upon your own baptism. Christ has put His name and claim upon you and upon your life. He calls you to be repentant for your sins against your covenant God, to confess your faith before men, and to live in newness of life to God who sealed His covenant with you by the blood of His Son. Tom and April, as the parents, let me ask the two of you, before God and before these witnesses, do you acknowledge that although our children are conceived and born in sin, and therefore are subject to condemnation, they are nevertheless holy in Christ by virtue of the covenant of grace, and as children of the covenant are to be baptized? Yes. Praise God. Do you promise to teach diligently to your children the principles of our holy Christian faith revealed in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and summarized in the confession of faith and catechisms of this church? Amen. Praise God. Do you promise to pray regularly with and for your children and to set an example of piety and godliness before them? Praise God. And finally, do you promise to endeavor by all the means that God has appointed to bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, encouraging them to appropriate for themselves the blessings and fulfill the obligations of the covenant? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Let's bow together in prayer. Merciful God, we pray that you would grant that just as Christ died and rose again, so these children may die to sin and rise to newness of life. Grant, O oh Lord, that all sinful affections may die in them, and that all things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in them. Grant that they may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Grant that those set apart today by baptism may also be endued with heavenly virtues and everlastingly rewarded through thy mercy, O blessed Lord God, who dost live and govern all things, world without end. Amen. All right. Maria, are you going to go first? Okay. I'm going to come right over here and turn and face the congregation. You look lovely today, by the way. Maria Eden Gaudet, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Tommy, where'd you go? There you are. All right. Come on over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look very handsome today, young man. You want to turn to the congregation? You want to hold Dad's hand? Okay, here we go. All right. Thomas Robert Gaudet, Jr., I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, uh -huh, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job, young man. And now Gloria. <laughs> All right. You ready, sweetie? Okay. Gloria, may Godet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And Victoria. Does mom want to hold her? Yeah? Okay. All right. Victoria, Lisa, Godet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many of you would not do that well if we had to baptize you again today, you know. <laughs> now, as these children are baptized into Christ and become members of His visible church, the whole congregation is obligated to love and receive them as members of the body of Christ. For we are, by one Spirit, all baptized into one body, and therefore do become members of one another. Christ claims these children as his own and calls you to receive each of them in love and commitment. And therefore, you should commit yourself before God this day to assist each of these children and their parents in their Christian nurture by your godly example, prayers, and encouragement in our most precious faith. 
and how you all want to step back up to all of you who are coming into the congregation today. You are beloved in Jesus Christ, and we welcome you all to the privileges of full communion with God's people. To Tom and April specifically, we give thanks to God for these children that he's given you and for your expressed desire for them to know the Lord and to follow him all their days. And along with the blessing of these children have come responsibilities that you've acknowledged and to which you've solemnly committed yourselves. And so I charge you today to continue steadfastly in the confession of faith that you've made and in the commitments before God that you've made by relying upon God's grace, especially through the means of grace in the Word of God, the sacraments, and prayer. Rest assured that if you confess Christ before men, He will confess you before His Father who is in heaven. Now may the God of all grace, who called you unto His eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a little while, perfect, establish, and strengthen you. To Him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's bow together once again in prayer. Almighty God and merciful Father, we do thank you and praise you that you have forgiven us and our children all our sins through the blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. You received us through your Holy Spirit as members of your only begotten Son and have adopted us as your children, and you have sealed and confirmed to us these blessings by holy baptism. We earnestly pray through your beloved Son that you will always govern these families by your Holy Spirit, that these children would be nurtured in the Christian faith and in godliness, that they would grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. May their parents lead by example and show by word and deed their submission to the Lord Jesus. Grant that all of these dear saints may see clearly your fatherly goodness and mercy which you've shown to them and to us all. May they all live in righteousness under our only teacher, King and High Priest, Jesus Christ. Give them the courage to fight against and overcome sin, the devil, and his whole dominion. May they forever praise and magnify you and your Son, our Savior, together with the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thankful you are.